Well, that's a bit rubbish, Daddy. Yep, it's another video on making a steady rest for a wood turning lathe. This is my lockdown challenge. Four or five years ago, I bought these inline skate wheels off uh, eBay with the intention of making a steady rest for my lathe. And I never got around to doing it. It's one of those jobs that I put off because there's always something better to be doing on my lathe than making tools. And So uh, anyway, my challenge today to myself is to make a steady rest for my lathe. And the biggest challenge is going to be we're still on lockdown, so I've got to use only stuff that's in my workshop i can't order any more bits and pieces so i hope i've got the right size nuts bolts wing nuts and i'm gonna to have to make do with all the scrap wood stock metal and little off cuts of plywood that i've got to make it so that's going to be the biggest challenge it's not going to be the most elegant of things it's going to be functional and strong uh, there are plenty of videos showing some beautiful designs of steady rest on uh, on YouTube. Notably, um, uh, we've got Mike Walt, uh, my friend Mike Walt. He did a, a good one, um, and Stephen Ogle did another. Did a good one as well. So, um, yeah, there's loads. If you Google it, there's loads. There's lots of different designs. I'm I'm quite decided what design. I might go for sort of the not quite full round one um, like you would have on a metal turning lathe but I don't know yet we'll see see what stock I've got well really this is what I've got to work with is some pieces up there we've got a few pieces there a load of half finished demo bowls which I've got to get around to doing at some point got some stock there um, and then I've got some sort of bar stock and tubes and things up here. So uh, we'll see what we've got. I've got quite a selection of nuts and bolts. Yeah, this is uh, what my workshop gets like when I'm in um, full maker mode. I will uh, blitz it in a day or two, get it back to uh, how it should be looking. This was the widest piece of 18 mil ply that I could find. And uh, I'm just marking out circles on this with my rubbishy compass and using a Japanese marking knife to mark out the radials. And here I'm using my smaller T4 router with um, a compass, uh, router compass. And I'm cutting out the inner circle. The outer circle I did on the bandsaw and the uh, bench sander to get it all nice and smooth. Just uh, using this gives a very clean cut and it cuts a very, very accurate circle. I do it in several passes so that I'm almost all the way through. I've cut a hole in there and then I'm using my jigsaw and I'm going within the kerf, just finishing the cut with the jigsaw. There you go. So I've got a good edge and a rough edge and I'm using a flush trim bit on the T4 router just to scoot round and get rid of that rough bit using some non-slip mat underneath it. Making sure you get the router going in the correct direction. Stop it skating. And there we go, it's all flush trimmed. I've rough cut from two other pieces because I've run out of big pieces of plywood so I'm using up off cuts. I've got two pieces that are rough cut to form a lamination, plenty of glue and plenty of clamps. You can never have too many clamps, just keep clamping and clamping. It was gluing up that actually uh, held me up quite a lot with this project. The next day I got my homemade router table out and using my bigger T11 router um, and I've mounted that in a router plate uh, table insert and I'm using a half inch flush trim a bigger flush trim bit and here you can see I'm trimming up the rough lamination to match the good lamination 
I used the router table to cut these slots in the ash arms as well just laying it up here and I've cut a piece of ply with the correct angles for the arms just marking that out so I can cut it out roughly using the bandsaw and here it is and it's positioned and I actually drilled dowel holes when it was in the correct position and I'm now gluing it and doweling it so that I know that it's in the correct position and more clamping and waiting for glue to dry and I had to do this twice more for the other the other two segments between the arms I've cut up some uh, steel bar stock here to make some washers to hold uh, to hold the arms in place putting that in the uh, machine vise and I used the drill press to cut the holes here's the uh, ash arms with the wheels all mounted with nylock nuts and washers etc I've used some more ash to make the base plate and uh, I glued all that together and clamped it to the lathe overnight to set up so here it is the next day a bit of sapili between the runners to form the guide and I temporarily bolted it all together as well you can see it marked my lathe overnight even though I used paper I also screwed it all together once it was dry using these big four inch um, screws going right through uh, the base plate into the frame two from each side offset distances there we go clean my lathe bed got the rust off it and it slides very nicely here's some metal stock very thick metal stock which took me an age to cut in half with a hacksaw and uh, I'm just marking out the centre of these two pieces. And these are going to form the braces that go underneath the lathe bed. Sort of a cam lock system. Centre punching into the machine vise and then onto the drill press. Just measuring uh, what size drill I need for an M10 thread. And it's a 9mm HSS drill. And here I've cut the holes, I've drilled the holes, and I'm now cutting the thread, tapping the thread. And I'm using a piece of wood so that I keep the uh, the tap perfectly upright. Plenty of cutting oil and going forwards and backwards as I'm tapping to release the uh, swarf. And I finished it off on the bench vise, just testing the bolt. The second one I just did on the bench vise, it was much easier. I lost all the footage of the drill press unfortunately. Just using my Pro Edge to take the rough, rough edges off and then fixing it together. So just all threads together, nice. Another ash off cut. Measuring the heads of the M10 bolts. Using a force and a bit, I've cut a sort of a countersink. I've cut those out now and uh, shaping them on the sander. There we go. And the heads were epoxied in. Once that's set, I'm just test fitting it all together. That works a treat. Very happy with that. Just assembling it all now. And I was very pleased with the homemade washers. They were a lot better than using repair washers. I had to make my own because I couldn't find any repair washers. Not the right size anyway. Little visitor popped in to see what Daddy was up to. Inspect it, make sure it's all right. Oh, and she's back again. I had a few of these little visitations during the build. Just a shop project, this video. Um, but I'm very pleased with it. It was my challenge to myself to uh, build my long-awaited steady rest from um, anything I could find in the workshop, really. So the only thing that I bought were these uh, inline skate wheels and I bought those at least four years ago I think uh, with the intention of building one of these and never got round to doing it. So I've, you know, where I've got a lot of time, where we're under lockdown and I'm stuck at home, luckily my workshop is at home. So now's the time to get on and do these projects. It's come out amazingly well, considering much better than I uh, 
was anticipating and uh, once you do these up it I mean you, it's absolutely rock solid um, yeah, I can lean right back on that and it's uh, going nowhere yeah it all adjusts very easily at the minute I've got these turned with the wheels inboard so to speak uh, because where they're inside this ring it will make it more stable but you could turn these arms this way so the wheels are on this side and that would give you probably an extra inch diameter or a couple of inches diameter because you could just extend these out a little bit further but I don't think I'm ever going to be turning anything that big um, so I, yeah, I'll leave it set up like this really. I only had one uh, repair washer, which is what I was going to fix these with. So I had to make my own, uh, cutting up some steel bar. But in actual fact, this does a better job than the repair washers. It's uh, a lot thicker and it offers more grip really, and bigger surface area. And you can really crank this up tight. And uh, these are not moving anywhere. This is all ash. I had uh, several off cuts of ash left over from various things. So these arms are solid ash. These bits are ash. The handles are ash. Uh, the rest of it is all plywood. I had one sheet of plywood that was wide enough to make one that was a suitable size. And I the size is dictated by that one piece. That was my master template, really. That's what it was all based on. So I just made the biggest one I could from that piece of plywood. And then it's been laminated with uh, these three pieces and uh, two pieces across the back. Doweled together as well as glued. Um, yeah, really pleased. And these, uh, I've put a metal lever under, uh, sort of bracing, what do I call them, brackets underneath. So this will lift out and uh, I put these little sort of cam stops here so as you unwind it these go into line so you can lift it out but as you uh, when you tighten it up these will automatically spin and stop so they're perpendicular to the bedways like that so uh, it just makes it easier when you're tightening up you can actually do it one-handed generally there's some places on my lathe bed where I've got some reinforcing struts and these won't quite get to 90 degrees but they still engage and if that one's not fully engaged at right angles the other one will be. Yeah absolutely rock solid, um, really really pleased with that. Put several bracing screws through, big long ones from each side, put a couple more on the, uh, the bit that goes between the beds just to make sure nothing can give um but yeah it's that side there's the other side but it was incredible really i you know it was right down to the last uh, nut and bolt in places i had three nylock nuts <laughs> which was all i needed i had three uh stainless bolts which are needed it was incredible actually uh it was really close to uh, not having enough bits loads of videos on youtube on how to make these things I haven't got any plans for this. I tend to make things up as I go along. And sort of just, I have a rough idea of how I'm going to do it and, and adapt it as I go. I just need to make something on it now. I thought I might try this gnarly old bit of you, but we'll see. Many thanks for watching. Many thanks to all my subscribers. Stay safe everyone in these difficult times and I'll be back soon. There's a few stills of the uh, contraption. I used ash um, of the art for the arms because it takes knocks and bangs very well. It's got a bit of bounce to it. I recently uh, made some replacement stays for some church bells out of ash because of these properties. Please like, share and subscribe. My daddy needs all the help he can get. More rubbish coming soon. As Mia says, please give me a thumbs up. It all helps me a great deal. And please subscribe if you haven't already. It costs nothing to subscribe. I'll see you all soon.